A scientist who's been making a splash on this show all week. Dr. Gordon Giesbrecht studies the effects of cold on the human body. And he's particularly interested in hypothermia. Now that's the medical condition that occurs when the body temperature drops below 35 degrees Celsius. Dr. Giesbrecht has been getting some personal exposure to extreme cold this week as he's been demonstrating what to do and what not to do if you ever fall through the ice. And as you're about to see, some of those life or death decisions are made when you're getting dressed. This scenario has the makings of a deadly combination. A snowmobile doing over 100 kilometers an hour, headlights that project a mere 30 meters and open water lying beyond the ice. By the time the driver sees the water, it'll be too late to stop. All I can see is black water, black sky, black water, black sky. And, uh, you know, it was basically being in the dark. And, uh, you know, I mean, there were two boats right behind me and I turned around once and I never saw anybody. Totally concentrating on what you need to do to, to stay above the water. It's a situation that, uh, you know, I never ever would want to be in for real because, uh, well, that would be the last experience you ever had for sure. Dr. Gordon Giesbrecht put himself through this experience in the name of scientific research. The hypothermia expert teamed up with snowmobile enthusiast John Blacher to learn more about cold water survival techniques and the stress cold puts on the body. The only thing separating this from a real snowmobile accident is the presence of rescue boats and television cameras. But there's definitely no acting involved. Their aim is to swim about 300 feet, or 91 meters, back to the solid ice. In real life, this would be their only chance of survival. While their goal is the same and their swimming strengths are on par, chances are that both of these men won't make it. We accomplished what I thought we would accomplish, but it, it was much, much more dramatic and, and much more real than, uh, than even I could have imagined or hoped for. At the heart of this whole demonstration is the clothing the two men are wearing. Dr. Giesbrecht is wearing a popular snowmobile suit with insulate insulation. It's designed for comfort and warmth, and it absorbs water, lots of water. His partner has a flotation suit, identical to this one, designed with the same type of closed cell foam insulation that life jackets are made from. The interior fabric is perforated to drain water. It's a little stiffer to move around in, and it costs a bit more money, but its purpose is to keep a person afloat. But the real difference between these two designs becomes blatantly obvious when they're put to the test in water. Right from the outset, Dr. Giesbrecht's biggest liability is his suit. The biggest problem was the effect of cold sapping all the energy out of your body, compounded by the fact of having at least 60 to maybe 80 pounds of water in the suit. It just made it virtually impossible to swim. Compare that with John, who was able to bolt towards the solid ice almost without effort. His backstroke helped propel him through the ice-laden water, as did his flotation suit. Even under the worst circumstances, this suit will only hold about 13 liters, or 28 pounds of water. Less than five minutes after plunging into the lake, Dr. Giesbrecht's suit becomes so waterlogged, he sinks lower and lower into the water, and his swimming becomes more labored. The fire crew is sure Dr. Giesbrecht is done at this point. I got you. You're fine. You're fine? Yeah, it's just fine. You're, you're going lower in the water all the time. Moments later, John makes it safely to the solid ice. His muscles are freezing and stiff, but he's not suffering any effects of hypothermia. And once he's moving, his suit drains to a mere four liters of water. But it was a completely different story for Dr. Giesbrecht, who attempts to copy John's swimming technique. From here I tried to do that backstroke thing, and because of the how waterlogged my suit was, I couldn't even get my arms out of the water, so that was useless. And at about this time, I started realizing that, uh, you know, I could, I could tell my body was becoming more vertical. When you, when you swim, you want to be horizontal, and, and it was becoming more vertical. I had a sense of that, and, and I just know that that's not good. And then I got to the point where I, you know, I, I, I realized, you know, it, I, there's no way I'm going to make it to the ice. And I figured, well, I probably have, you know, I, I could really only swim here for 
maybe a couple of more minutes, probably 30 seconds, I don't know. But for, for one brief moment, I kind of just shut everything else out, shut the lights out, the fact that there were rescue people behind me, and just tried to put myself in the place of a victim, if this was for real. And uh, it was an amazing moment. I, uh, just a feeling of total isolation and desperation and helplessness. And, uh, you know, it was a chilling moment, uh, no pun intended. And it was, uh, you know, just realizing if, I, if this was for real, this would be a really lousy way to die because uh, it's not quick. You have time to think about it and realizing that, you know, I'm, I, would, I would be dying very soon here. Just relax and come in. When it was clear that he was at the end and close to drowning, the rescue crew wasted no time plucking Dr. Giesbrecht from freezing water and motoring him to shore. Where's Gord? It's not the fact that you're in cold water that's going to kill you of hypothermia in five minutes. It's, it's, it's all the, the lack of ability to swim, the gasping if your mouth happens to be under the water and you drown. Uh, you get sucked under the ice and now you drown. You know, we did all many different sort of cold water scenarios that, that showed different ways that victims die. And none of those scenarios uh, ha involved people being in the water long enough to have significant hypothermia. In the end, Dr. Giesbrecht managed to swim a mere 15 meters or 50 feet in just over six minutes. His partner, John, swam the full 91 meters or 300 feet in less time. Dr. Giesbrecht has been hypothermic 33 times in his career. And believe it or not, this wasn't one of them. Well, that would suck. For all his shivering and exhaustion, he says that physiologically, he wasn't that bad. The problem here was having to uh, expend energy. When you start moving your, your, your increasing the blood flow to your arms and legs and and by doing that you're increasing the heat loss so you know normally if I had just been sitting with that suit on at the ice edge for 10 minutes or 15 minutes my temperature might not have dropped at all because of the, the shivering I would have been doing would have, would have kind of produced enough heat to kind of slow that down but as soon as you start doing all this work it just temperature just starts dropping Can you hear his core body temperature dropped about one degree Celsius, a long way from the perils of hypothermia. But this situation is still potentially fatal and all too common. The outcome could be much different by changing two simple variables. Going slower across ice, so your headlights will see the water in time to stop, and obviously wearing a flotation suit, a decision that could save your life.